Hey you guys, this is Mr. Sal. Thanks for watching. This is just a quick lesson on function arithmetic. So uh, if you like the video, please like, subscribe, and comment. And tell me what you think about the video. So we'll start with f plus g of 4. So we saw on that last slide what these really mean, right? This is really just f of what would be x is 4 plus g of 4. And they gave us the two equations, so I'm going to start by replacing f of 4, which is this 6x squared, but I, I can see x is 4, right? So I've got 4 squared plus 4. And then I'm going to add the g, which is uh, this 5x squared minus 2. Well, for me, I would actually just plug this into my calculator exactly as I see it. But some of you guys hate that for some reason. So... Let's uh, do the work on this thing. I've got to uh, do the order of operations. So I'm going to start with 4 squared, which is 16. And this 4 squared, also 16. So now, uh, there's, there wasn't really any parentheses. We had exponents. Now multiplication and division from left to right. So I'm looking at 6 times 16 and 5 times 16. All right, then we just have general addition and subtraction. Uh, well, here's the nice thing is uh, subtraction and addition are pretty related or relatable kind of stuff, right? So if I go into this and just replace that plus with minus, then I would replace this red plus right here with minus. That does change a little bit more than you may want it to, though, okay? Because what that means is, let's get rid of this other stuff. Thank you. So now instead of 4, we have negative 8, and this is minus. But the problem is we can't just simply replace uh, the minus or the plus with the minus here, okay? What I mean by that is we really should put the g of negative 8 in parentheses because this expression needs to be in parentheses. Now you may be wondering why that's so important. Is because if we were to treat this as a negative 1 and distrib distribute it, then instead of that being minus 2, it's going to end up being plus 2. Now, by the order of operations, that's not really going to concern us. The distribution thing, okay? Eesh. Okay? So, what it does mean, though, is if I go through this, it's going to change a little bit, perhaps, than what we may have thought. Okay? So, by the order of operations here, not again that we really need to, because the calculator will do it for us. But, let's say we want to do it because we love it so much. Negative 8 squared is a positive 64, both of these. All right, let's multiply these then. Oh, I, I'm sorry. We, you know, we could have focused on the parentheses first, but I didn't. I apologize. Whatever. 320 minus 2, we'll finish that off, 318. And I can combine my 384 and 4. 388. So that makes it 388 minus 318, which is, all right, f times g of negative 3. Is everyone okay with this part? Just kind of transformed it or translated it. And I've got f of negative 3, which is 6x squared plus 4, but I'm replacing the x with negative 3 which is 5x squared minus 2, but I'm replacing the x with negative 3 again. All right. So by the order of operations, negative 3 squared first. That gives us 9 in both cases. And now in the parentheses, I'd be looking at multiplication for both. And then finally, we'll do the addition. Hmm. Yeah, there we go. So I end up with 58 times 43, which is a big number. I, did I write that right? All right, let's do the division. So we'll write it out first. There we go. And this will work as long as g of 5 is not 0, which it should be. So we'll replace uh, f of 5 with the 6x squared plus 4. And then I'll replace g of x with the 5x squared minus 2, but I'm replacing the x with 5 again. And the order of operations... I got 5 squared, which is 25 for both. All right. 6 times uh, 25, 150, plus 4 is 154. 
And then 5 times 25, 125 minus 2, 123. Can that be simplified? Our final answer then is just 154, 1 thirds. If you want to write the mixed number for that, that's okay. Um, the decimal, I assume, would look pretty bad. Uh, the nice thing about this one is it gives us different values for the X and Y's, and it kind of mixes it up. Does this one have the... So, we'll start with G of 9. So, G of 9. If you wanted to do it this way, you could, right? So, 7 times uh, 9 squared, plus 2 times 9, plus 90. And then just evaluate this, which I highly recommend using the calculator for. All right, then let's do F of 11. So, I'm replacing the X with 11. 11 times 11 minus 5 which, once again, I can put into my calculator. All right, so this function is really g of 9, which is 675, plus f of 11, which is 116. Well, that's a calculator one, too. Sure. All right, well, what about f of 2? So now I've got f of 2, which is 11 times 2, minus 5, uh, 16, no, 17, right? And g of 10. So that gives me uh, 17 minus 810, which is, it's going to be negative. All right. Uh, we didn't do g of 7 or f of 14. Let's do those. All right, so g of 7, f of 14. So now I'll take my 147. So this is equal to 147, and divided by f of 14, which is 149. That's a slim chance that could be simplified, but probably not. I think we'll just keep it. Thank you. Reading properly is good. 447 divided by 149 is 3. Yeah, that actually made a huge difference. Well, we'll skip into it then. f of 6... Uh, if we plugged it in, uh, 66 minus 5, 61. And G of 13, 7 times 13 squared plus 2 times 13 plus 90. All right, so I got 1299 times, I'm sorry, 61 times 1299. Not that it matters. It's a big number. Yeah. This one takes us back to some exponent rule stuff. Not that we remember them because we use them every day in our lives. But we can still do them. Okay, so this first one, g of x minus f of x, it just doesn't give us a value of x to replace, okay? So all I'm going to do is write this out. I've got 96x to the fourth plus 3, that's my g of x, right? And I'm dividing it by f of x, which is 12x cubed, which looks pretty nice as it is, but uh, that's not really what they want on this thing. What they want you to do is to split this up so that you have two fractions being added together, which means that uh, if, if you had only one fraction, it, it means you had common denominators to start out with. That doesn't have to make complete sense, but you need to know how to do that, okay? What this does is it allows us to simplify some of this stuff. Okay, for example, 96 divided by 12 should be 8. And then you got x to the fourth divided by x cubed. When we divide the same bases, which in this case are the x's, then we're subtracting the exponent. So I've got 4 minus 3, so that's x to the power of 1. Not that we need to show that 1, okay? And then 3 divided by 12 would be 1 fourth, but you got that x cubed in the denominator as well. So that's a plus right there. I would keep it like this. Or at least it'll be the same idea on this next part. So I have uh, h of x. I'm just going to use it right there. The 36x to the 8th plus 72x to the 7th plus 3. But I'm going to divide this by 12x cubed, right? Now I did separate that on purpose so that I can split these fractions up. So 
each of these terms is going to be divided by 12x cubed, which is why we were able to make that one fraction to begin with. Again, once you have common denominators, you can make it one fraction. Okay. So that means all three of these had common denominators, as we see here. So I've, I've got 36 divided by 12, which is 3. Then I've got x to the 8th divided by x cubed, so I can subtract those exponents, which really gives me x to the 5th. So 3x to the 5th will be that term. Then we got 72 divided by 12, which is 6. And the same idea with these x's, x to the 7th minus, uh, I'm sorry, divided by x to the 3rd is x to the 7th minus 3, so that's really x to the 4th, or 6x to the 4th. That's a positive 6, by the way. And then we got 3 divided by 12x cubed, which will give us, once again, that 1 over 4x cubed just like we did in that g of x divided by f of x stuff. So that's it. That's as far as we can take that thing. On that last one, the A company produces very unusual CDs. I think all CDs nowadays are considered unusual. Am I wrong there? Does anyone have like a stack of CDs at home? I, I mean, I do too, don't get me wrong, but is that like outdated now? <laughs> I just love them so much. For which the variable cost is $16 per CD, and the fixed cost is 35 grand. They will sell the CDs for $41 each. Let X be the number of CDs produced. I don't know what CDs these are, but um, not much of this is realistic anyways. So it just wants a cost function based on the number of CDs produced, right? So we'll start with the cost. The cost is uh, what it says it was $16 per CD, right? So if I take 16 and multiply it by the number of CDs, which it said is X, then I have the cost for just the CDs. But then in addition to that, it said that it had a fixed cost of 35 grand. So I'm gonna add that 35 grand. Now that is the cost function. You could say C of X, but that's more writing than we want anyways, right? So, the next part is the revenue. The money brought in from these CDs, that's it equals, is what they sell them for. Okay, now, this doesn't have to be an economics lesson, but there's a difference between revenue and profit and a cost, of course, okay? Which they're kind of getting at anyways. So, the revenue is going to bring in $41 for every CD. So, we're going to multiply that by the number of CDs, still X, and that will tell us how much money is brought in. Write the total profit as a function of the number of CDs produced. Well, profit is where we take our, yeah, I'm going to take the revenue. What the heck? Revenue, and I'm going to subtract my cost. Now, if my revenue is not big enough, then I'm going to have a negative profit. Okay, which is bad if you're running a business. So, well, I guess they'll just have to find the break even, whatever. So the revenue on this one is 41x, and I'm subtracting the cost, which is 16x plus 35 grand. Now, if we leave it like this, you're going to get it wrong. Okay, here's why, is remember... This is really R of X minus C of X. So like we saw in that one of those last exercises, we need that in parentheses. Because not only are we subtracting just the 16X, but we're technically subtracting the 35 grand as well. So just be aware of that. Be careful with it too, okay? Now this, in this case, that does mean we need to distribute this as a negative one. Some of you guys would just change the signs of all the terms on the inside of that parentheses. It's not going to matter. That's going to give us negative 16x minus 35 grand. Well, from here, we'll just combine like terms. 41x minus 16x is, oh, that's 25x. I am just assuming that on the homework, they would want this simplified. So that's why we simplify it. Okay? But just be careful. If you're at that point where you're looking to combine the 25x with the 
35 grand. Don't, because they're not like terms. We can't combine them, okay? So what is the break-even uh, point for this business model? That is where, well, it's the same for all businesses, but it's where the revenue is the same as your cost. Not that they ever stay the same necessarily, but the revenue we know is 41x, and the cost is 16x plus 35 grand. And that's where they're equal, right? Mm -hmm. Some of you guys would have just said, well, your profit value is zero and then solve that equation. It's going to be the same either way. Because on this, I'm going to subtract 16x from both sides. I'm writing that kind of small. Can everyone still see that? 41x minus 16x, we already did that. That gave us 25x's. And this is equal to the 35 grand. So we'll just divide both sides by 25. And that will tell us how many CDs must be sold to break even on this. So 35,000 divided by 25. So the problem is, is that the answer is not 1,400, if you want full credit. There you go. CDs, some of you guys like to, oh, what the heck? Some of you guys like to write those sentences, so you would have to sell 1,400 CDs to break even. Whatever. I'm okay with this. In fact, I'll box it in. Okay, so if we try to divide 9 divided by 0, this is long division, which most people hate, but we love still. Okay. How many zeros go into 9? 1, 2, 3. Did I write that right? No, yeah, I did. I did. How many zeros can you put into 9? No, we can, though. I can put one zero in, right? How many zeros can I put into a nine? Infinite number of zeros, okay? There's an infinite number of zeros, and it's, it's actually increasing as we speak, okay? So that's why it's considered undefined and cannot be part of the domain, because this is not a definable number, infinity, right? There's only one person that's counted to infinity. He's done it twice. Jack Norris, right? You guys knew that. That makes sense, right? Okay, so in order to find values that are not in the domain, we just need to make the, the denominator zero if we see an x in the denominator for fractions. So something like this. It's not x, but t. So what value of t is not in the domain of the function? It's not asking for the domain, but it will eventually. Well, it's whatever value of t makes the denominator 0. So I see 3t minus 20 is the denominator, but I want to make it equal to 0 to see what value of t will not work, which really means I could make it not equal to 0, which is more like an inequality, but it's going to solve the same way as an equation. So I'm going to add 20 to both sides. So 3t cannot equal 20, so I'll divide by 3. So t cannot equal 20 thirds. <coughs> so t cannot be 20 thirds. Question. If the 42 had a t with it, then we would have to consider doing something with it, which comes in a later module. But right now we don't have to worry about it because it didn't have one. Otherwise, we, we would have to worry about it, but in this case, without the t, no worries. We've seen the, a problem like this already. The plot shows f of x. Find f of 2. Well, remember, this is representative of f of x. So really, x is 2. So what value of y is... When, what, what is the value of y when x is 2? So yeah, we see that it's corresponding with this point, 2, 4. So yeah, it's um, 4. They're going to change this as well and say, well, what about where f of x is 2? It's just asking what the value of x is when y is 2, right? So I look for y is 2 right here in purple, which takes us to this point, 3, 2. So f of x is 2. Um, that means x would be 3. Yeah, we're just circled with 3, whatever. A town with population P in thousands produced G tons of garbage per week by the function G equals F of P. 
uh, if the town produces 10 tons for uh, 50,000 people, express the information in terms of, of the function F. So it's F of P. Now it told us that P is the population in thousands, and there's 50,000 people. So P is 50, because it's already in thousands. All right? And this equals G, which is the tons of garbage per week. Well, it's 10 tons. 10. You guys like that break? It felt pretty good, huh? We feel weird about this answer. It's because, because I had a flight. I did the G. The, our problem with this usually is that we're so used to doing a lot of work <coughs> that now that we've done a little work, we feel weird about it. Okay? But that's the answer. That's as far as we need to go. Now, just be careful because we look at this and we think, oh, breaks over, back to work, right? These ones are still pretty simple, okay? So let me demonstrate. The first one is f of 10. So we're looking for the f function, which is, I'm just going to write, it's in red right there. So I'm looking for where the x is 10 because it's f of 10. x is 10 right here. Bam, they gave us the f of x value, f of 10 value which is 40. But then I need to add g of 2, which I'll put in purple. So that's x is 2 right here, which is this row. Well, at g of 2 then is 60, so I've got 40 plus 60, which is 100. Well, g of 20, yeah, that's 97 right here. And this one's minus f of 6, which is 9. 97 minus 9 is 88. What's the next one? Is that um, f of 10? Oh, we did that one. Did we? Yeah. 40? 40 times g of 20. Oh, we did that one too. 97? 40 times 97. All right, then, next up, g of 2, which, again, we have, as 60, divided by f of 6, which is 9. Well, that doesn't go into it evenly, <laughs> but it should simplify. Thank you. It even seems like we've seen that fraction already today. But whatever. Now, instead of giving us the tables, it's giving us the graphs. So as long as we can find the corresponding values, we should be able to solve these just as easy as the last ones. I guess I switched the positions on this. This is f of x here in red, and this is our g of x here in purple. So f of 0, that's where the x is 0 right here. Then uh, the y value is 2. Oh, that should have been red. All right, then g of 5 right here then the y value is 3. So I've got 2 plus 3, which is 5. Next up, g of 4, which is this value here, which is 4. So 4, and this will be minus f of 3, which is this value, x is 3 here. So that's this point 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. See, I didn't even need a calculator there. F of 0, we've already found, is 2, and G of 4 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. And we've also found G of 5, which is 3, divided by F of 3, which is also 3, is 1. Bam.